Hello, hello, happy day, happy day. Fridays are for book club. So last Friday, I covered up to chapter eight of cleaning up your mental mess, five simple scientifically proven steps to reduce anxiety, stress, and toxic thinking. So today I'm going to cover chapters nine through 11 because that's where we are in our book club, right? Friday's our book club. So I want to share some crucial and key points from these chapters, starting with chapter nine, directing your brain for change. Here are the crucial and key points. The, uh, the ability to cope with and overcome your circumstances is within us. Calmness can be derived from when you observe your own thinking outside of yourself, you can get helpful information from your discomforts to help you heal, excuse me, to help you deal with our healing. Let me say that again. You can get helpful information from your discomforts to help us deal with our healing. You have the power to change your brain in the, in the direction you desire. The connection between your conscious mind and the non-conscious mind is important. Hyper hyper vil, hyper vilgence. Hyper vilgence. I'm, try, I'm trying to say this word right. Hyper vilgence. Hyper vilgence. And hyper and hypo vilgence needs to be monitored. Okay. I need to um circle that because I really want to explain what those words are. As soon as I find out, I'm gonna share it with y'all. <laughs> um, you can either build chaos or Excuse me. You can either build chaos or order in your brain. You can either build chaos or order in your brain. So that is that's from chapter nine. Okay, and then chapter ten. Why it takes sixty three days of neural cycling to form a habit. Crucial and key points. Detoxing the mind should be a lifestyle. Breaking bad habits is is an ongoing process. Detoxing can be mentally, physically, emotionally taxing. OK, your mental health requires that we learn, excuse me, your mental health requires we keep learning every day. Right. That's what makes us grow. That's what makes us evolve. A lot of times when we aren't learning, we start to get stuck. We start to feel stuck. So we must keep learning every day. Learn something new every day. You are not you are not prisoners of your thoughts. Your thoughts can influence your, your bodies. Toxic thoughts can can re can be reconceptualized into healthy thoughts. Thoughts are complex, intertwined, and interconnected. Okay. Then, lastly, chapter eleven: neurocycling to build your brain and develop mental toughness. The brain is co- constantly changing. Brain building is a rapid pro- brain building is a rapid process in action, but it takes a long time to stick. Brain building can be effective against panic and anxiety attacks. Brain building is, is a neuroplexicity practice that keeps the brain tidy and clean. Brain building can improve resilience in the mind and brain. Brain building can increase brain power and intelligence. Brain building produce, produces increased levels of autonomy. Brain building should be done daily for significant results. Brain building should be done daily for significant results. So I want to look these word these two words up so I can give you some um clarity on what it on what it means these words mean. I always do this when there's something that I have, that I am not familiar with. I've heard these words, but I really want to look up the def, the definition because that's how you learn. You learn by um by seeking that wisdom, like looking up things. Okay, so hypervillian. Okay, here it is. So it is hypervill. Vilgence, hyper vigilance. Like I'm saying, I think I'm saying it right. If I'm not, charge it to the head and not the heart. So, okay, so it is extreme or or excessive vigilance, the state of being highly or abnormally alert to potential danger or threat. A person, a person suffering with PTSD, may have hyper hyper vigilance. I said it right. Heightened startle responses and flashbacks. Okay, okay, so that makes sense. So flashbacks, most people who have this um, potentially suffer from PTSD and they have flashbacks. So there was a time when um, 
I had a neighbor that was in the military and he used to have these episodes and think and he used to wake up in the middle of the night thinking that he was being attacked because he was in he was he, he served in the in the military in, in the army and um they did combat and all that stuff so he would wake up in the middle of the night thinking that like like somebody's attacking him he wake up grabbing his gun and like I remember one night they had to call the cops because you know, he just didn't know where he was. He thought he was he was at war, and, and you know he was you know I, he, he, they, nobody knew what he was going to do, so they had to protect him and as, as well as everybody else. So I definitely um can can uh, I now understand what that means. Um, and let's see, I want to look up the the other word hypo. So it's hyper and it's hype. It's hype. We just looked up hyper, and I want to look up hypo. Oh, okay. Here it is. <clears throat> no, that's hyperventilation. I know what that is. It's just one letter difference. Can't be that hard, right? Hypo. V I L. I G I L A N C E. All right, let's see. It gotta be the same thing, cause even when I'm trying to look it up, they keep giving me the, the previous word. So hyper and hypo needs to be monitored. So it's basically it's basically the same thing. I don't know why they got two different um two different spellings. And it says that people, um, hyper, hyper vigilant people will be on the lookout for threats that are either, um, unlikely or, ex or, or exa uh, exaggerated. This may include, um, shutting themselves, shutting themselves in to avoid an attack, sitting near an exit so they can escape quickly. Okay. So these are people just like, kind of like, they don't like to be enclosed in, um, closed in proximate enclosed in buildings they want to be if they're in a room they want to be near near the door in just in case something happens because they're always thinking that it's a threat right that makes a lot of sense okay now we understand that there's another one i want to look up got a little time right here so i wanted to look up another one i, I underlined and that was autonomy i know i heard this in school so i think i know but i'm not for, for sure so we're gonna look that up to autonomy Autonomy meaning. So autonomy is independence or freedom as the will of one, as the will or one's actions. The autonomy of the individual, the condition of being autonomous, self-government or self-govern or, excuse me, or, or the right of self-government. Okay. So what does the autonomy mean in simple terms? I like simple terms, y'all. I don't know about y'all. Independence or freedom as of the will of one's actions, the autonomy of the individual. So that's the will, the, the will and actions of another person. So when it says brain building produces an increased levels of autonomy, the independent, the freedom of the of a person's actions. See, it, it makes sense to look stuff up because sometimes we only know what we know. If you never heard these words before, child, look them up because that's what I do. I look them up. I get the definition. I like to have examples because examples help teach what you're talking about, help you understand. Not only, I, not only are you trying to understand, I'm trying to understand too. Because some of these words I've heard before, but it's like, I want to like, give me that word in a sentence <laughs> so I can make some sense out of it. So Fridays are for book club. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to stop this.